Mommy. That's great. I'll come closer, Ezra. No, I will come closer. Oh, okay. You don't have to. That's okay. Okay. So, uh, who are you depicting today, Ezra? Uh, so, we, we're depicting the 27th Ottoman Regiment. 27th Alay, as is uh, called in Turkish. <laughs> oh, hey. <laughs> there you go. Okay. And, Thank uh, you. anyway, uh, so this is a, the basic uh, Turkish military uniform or Ottoman uniform during World War I. Uh, there's lots of variations in it. Uh, a lot of the parts were cottage industry made. So they vary a lot. Um, and this is the Gallipoli campaign we're talking about, right? Absolutely. The uniform almost doesn't change through the entire war. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of, like, depending on the campaign and where they're at, like, there's a lot of civilian clothes that got pressed into military service. Um, and if they were close to German and Austrian troops, a lot of times they got German and Austrian uniforms as well. But this is basically what they would be wearing. Um, Throughout, throughout World War One. So you're wearing a Kabbalak hat? Yep. Uh, and then these are your ammunition pouches? Yeah, these are the German-style pouches. Um, they were domestically produced, but they were also produced in Germany and, and shipped into the Ottoman Empire. Mm -hmm. um, you know, everything is made of wool or a wool and cotton blend. Uh, it's, uh, sometimes it's very loose woven, sometimes it's very coarse, sometimes it's, uh, it's really lightweight and soft. Uh, at, at some point during uh, World War One, uh, when they were trying to bulk up the Ottoman army, they're they're actually buying any cloth they could buy in Constantinople. They they anything they could get their hands on. Mm -hmm. um, and I so I realize your the regiment you're depicting here uh, has a variety of uniforms. Looks like a like a ragtag unit, and but I guess it's uh, close to reality because their uniforms yep. varied quite a bit. Absolutely. Yeah. And I. Um, some of the things, like let's say this is holding by a string, and you say this was the way it was used back in the day. Yeah, um, you see in pictures, so the German equipment, the, the knapsack would actually have straps that would attach and help hold the weight of your ammunition belt. And the Germans also made just utility straps to help do that. But the Ottomans didn't seem to get those for some reason, and uh, they used a French style knapsack since the 1850s. So, to make up for not having that, they'd make a halter out of a piece of rope or another type of utility strap or leather, uh, anything they could do to help, you know, carry that weight evenly. Can I see your knapsack? Yep. Okay. Thank you. Uh, can you show me some of the weapons that Absolutely. would be used? So, hey, Len, Len, Len. Help me break this stash out. Okay. So, what we got here is these are some of the uh, guns that they used early on in, in, in the, the war and they used for rear uh, echelon troops. This is a Martini Henry. Uh, they used Martini Henry's, Peabody Henry's. It's a British design. It's a uh, 57 caliber. Uh, it, pretty, pretty big round. It's a single shot weapon. Uh, they were made in the 1870s. And uh, when the World War I broke out, they were pressing every weapon they could into service. Uh, another weapon along that lines, Lance got here. This is a an 1853 British Enfield musket, rifled musket, that's been converted to a Snyder. <laughs> Same caliber as that. We have the uh, Maxim machine gun there, running there in the back. Go. And uh, again, these weren't generally used as frontline weapons, but they were used by rear. So, are these actual Ottoman rifles? Uh, th these, these were, these are not used by the Ottomans. These two, but I'm, I mean, these are the same types. They're same types that was used. Yeah. So basically, it was just a mix and match of uh, yeah, various they were weapons. Yeah. Everything they could. Um, if we go over here. I'm gonna break this up for you. So 
So we got three uh, different weapons here. They're all kind of similar. Over here you have the Model 1890 Turkish Mauser. Uh, these were imported from Germany. And these were the, the Turkish Army, the Ottoman Army, they actually had a sweetheart deal with Mauser. Every time there was an updated model or, or uh, advancement in the technology, their contracts automatically defaulted for whatever the best was. So they got top of the line every time the new Mauser came out, they got it. Um, this is a Model 1893 Turkish Mauser. Mm -hmm. um, and this was actually a Turkish Mauser, right? This is a Turkish Mauser. Yeah. And I it, could see here the... It, it was re arsenaled in the 1930s, but you can mm -hmm. see the Ottoman dates here. Yeah. So during the, um, the new Turkish Republic, these were stamped Ankara on them? Yep. Yeah. Now, the other weapon we have here was all used by the Turks in pretty good numbers on the Eastern Front when they were fighting the Russians. Mm -hmm. um, they got tons and tons of captured Mosin Nagants. So this is a Russian rifle. It's a Mosin Nagant from yep. the Russian army, yeah? So. Okay. So it's, it's an overview of pretty much all the major infantry weapons they used. Okay, thank you very much. Absolutely.